So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of of Footprints. Here we are, and uh, my guest today is Mr. Reggie Pittman. He is a, a BHS educator. I also am an an educator here at BHS. That's Beverly High School. I teach a leadership class, and Mr. Pittman teaches a personal finance class. We're going to find out today who left a p- footprint on Mr. Pittman. We're also going to talk a little bit about personal finance in terms of business corporations and how business corporations sort of kind of contrast and compare with high school. You're thinking, hmm, Mr. Davis, how are we going to do that? Well, let's think about it for a minute. Typically, high schools aim to educate, which is really what they do. We develop, like, their skills and all of that. And they kind of prepare you for, like, higher education if you're going to go do that, which is really cool. Uh, And then sometimes it prepares you for the workforce. The focus, though, basically is academics and sort of academic achievement here in high school, right? Business corporations, on the other hand, kind of flip it a little bit. They're, like, primarily aim to generate profits for shareholders. And what they do is they focus on financial performance. So those are some of the purposes and goals of of high school and also of businesses. But what we're going to do today is we're going to, first of all, learn about uh, Mr. Pittman, who here to my left is again, as I mentioned, a business uh, personal finance teacher here uh, in in Beverly, at Beverly High School. And uh, we're going to ask Mr. Pittman, who left the footprint on you? And how did you get started basically in education? Oh, Mr. Davis, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, we talked a little bit before about this. My story isn't a grand story, how I got started in education. Uh, I was a longtime coach. I always coach young kids on the fundamentals of sports, whether it's flag football or basketball. And a little kid said to me, you sound like my teacher. <laughs> and ever since then, I said, gee, I wonder what it takes to become a teacher. Yeah. So then I went through the certification. I took some courses, and then I became a teacher. So it wasn't, it's not a grand story, <laughs> but it, it's a story filtered off of a young man who said that to me, a little kid who said, you sound like my teacher. So Because the way I was coaching him, I, I, I was just kind of teaching him along the fundamentals of how to play, mm-hmm. how to play basketball correctly. And when he said that, it just a little light went off. So I said, hey, why don't I become a teacher? Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, a spark like that really kind of just happens organically, you know what I mean? And it gets you thinking, man, I could probably do that. And then, look, you jumped in, and here you are, personal finance teacher here at BHS. Tell us a little bit about uh, your course. Like, what would I learn if I were to take Mr. Pittman's personal finance class? Okay. Uh, We talk everything and anything about life when it comes to money. We talk about opening up a checking account, savings account, how to balance the two. We talk about budgeting, which is the number one thing. We talk about apartment rental. Uh We talk about investments. Uh We talk about insurance. We talk about um, home buying. So everything that involves around your life when it comes to money, we talk about. Oh, man. And and believe me, money is, as they say, is the root of all evil. But sometimes, listen, it's a necessary evil. You got to have it in order to exist in this particular world. It's interesting that we're talking about uh, finance in in high school because they kind of parallel a little bit. Right. The structure of high school is is such where there's like the school board and principals and administrators and teachers and students. And then with a business, sort of, you have, like, a hierarchy of, like, the structure of shareholders and board of directors and, 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 and people that are administrators and all that stuff. So those things kind of go hand in hand a little bit. What I do like, I will say, about high school is they're governed by what? Educational authorities, such as, like, federal education departments, things like that, and school boards. And they also kind of adhere a lot to, like, educational standards and policies. Business, though, on the other hand, as we're talking about business corporations, they're regulated by various governments as well and governmental bodies, depending on their industry, right? And some of them have to comply with certain laws, and they're, you know, sort of related to the labor and all of that and the trade and environment and corporations of certain things. Um, Mr. Pittman, tell me a little bit more about your particular class. I'm going to learn a lot about finance, but what else will I learn besides that? Well, everything when it comes to money, as as I mentioned, but we talk about how to manage your money. For mm-hmm. example, we just finished our tax 
curriculum. So every single one of my students now, they now know how to prepare their taxes. And before we get into how to prepare taxes, we went through what are taxes used for, how are they collected, mm -hmm. why we pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So before people get really upset about paying taxes, we get into why we have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. It's the money that goes to paying teachers. It's the money that's going to police officers, firefighters. So they know it's necessary. Now we get into how to prepare our taxes. So we went through the whole curriculum, how to pay a, a 1040. Uh, we went into a little bit into deductibles and all that. So every single one of my students now, we finished our tax curriculum. So now every single one of them knows how to prepare a 1040. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And that's something I didn't get when I was in high school. Me, Never me got did it. I. Me did I. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, did I. so here we are. So funding is really important, right? So. High school funding, they're primarily funded by, like, government allocations and, and local, state, and federal, stuff like that, with some funding from private sources and whatnot, which is pretty cool. And a lot of times there's fundraising involved as well, right? Business corporations, though, they're funded basically through private investments and sales revenue and possibly loans or venture capitalists and people like that, which I think is kind of important. Um, tell me, Mr. Pittman, about one thing that a person or a student would learn primarily from your class and use it in the real world? Okay. Well, we, and I teach two classes when it comes to business. Uh, I have three preps, but two of them are directly related to business, mm -hmm. personal finance and business law. In my personal finance course, we go through how to set up a corporation. Mm -hmm. In my business law class, we go through how to set up a corporation but we go through the legalities of setting up a corporation, and we actually go through the ABCs of, of setting up a corporation and how not to get into trouble legally. Mm. So I have two, two aspects, how to set up a corporation in my personal finance course. In business law, we set it up, but we also talk about the legalities. So in my personal finance course, we go through the ABCs, what is a sole proprietorship, what is a partnership? What is a corporation? Mm -hmm. So we actually go through the step of setting up a corporation. Where, uh, where does the money come from? How do they uh, um, solicit money from shareholders? Mm -hmm. what, do they, what do they do if it goes public? That means they have to go to the stock, uh, divvy up stocks. So depending on which course you want to enter, the personal finance or business law, you'll get exposure on how to do business, whether from it from a... a a straightforward point of view on the personal finance mm -hmm. or from the legal standpoint, depending on which way you want to approach how to start a business. But both classes, we talk about how to start a business and we go through the funding of going through business and in the business law, we talk about how not to get into trouble when it comes to setting up a corporation and paying your taxes and doing all the legal things, how to hire an attorney, where to look for legal help, Oh, I like it. Absolutely. So you go through everything, nuts and bolts, soup to nuts, yes, soup to do. nuts, as they say. Absolutely. Right? I Absolutely. love it. I love Absolutely. it. So let's uh, let's learn a little bit about you as an individual, Mr. Pittman. Do you have any siblings? I have three. I have, have three. actually three. One passed away, but I have three uh, siblings. Okay. Uh, two brothers and one sister. One of my brothers passed away a few years ago, but I do have two brothers and a sister. Now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Older or younger? I have one older and two younger. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so I'm actually number two in the chain of four of us. I have an older brother, Mark, me. I have a younger sister, Carol, and a younger brother, Terrence, which is pretty good. There's four of us. We always like, always no milk in the house. You know how that goes, <laughs> right? Always fighting over something. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience growing up. How was that um, dynamic with your siblings and your parents? And in fact, did you grow up in this area or did you grow up in another area? I grew up in Boston. Okay. We originally started in Roxbury, moved to Jamaica Plain, and then we've been in Mattapan for quite a while. Um, that's a small section of Boston. But I spent about 20 years in Houston. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate to move my brother. We started a business. We ran an export-importing business in Houston. We did that for about 10 or 12 years, and then we dissolved the business. And then I stayed in Houston, and that's when I got into teaching. Ah, so um, okay. it, it, it was business that originally brought me to Houston. But born and raised, I'm always going to be associated with Boston, born and raised, breaded, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, I live there now, so I commute from Boston. I come here to Beverly. Um, the commute is a little tough, but, you know, you 
you get take the good with the bad. It's a, you take but the good yeah, with the bad. Born, born and bred in Boston. Uh, love every bit of Boston. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. So uh, I uh, I grew up in South Weymouth, which is a suburb on the South Shore. Um, and it's interesting for me, uh, teaching was, was, was kind of like an afterthought. But it's interesting how it got sparked in me. Mm-hmm. So I was in construction, making pretty good money, doing my thing, having fun, doing all that. I got hurt on the job. And I'm at home and I'm driving my wife crazy, all right? I'm on the couch and I'm driving her crazy. And this is like 25 years ago, 25, almost 30 years, 30 years, what, 33 years? 33 years ago I've been married, all right? So uh, I'm driving her nuts. And she's like, oh, my God, Tony, you've got you to go do something. She goes, you're like, go, go do something, like be a substitute teacher or something. And I went, ding, I could, I could do that. So I looked into it and I started substitute teaching. Then I started, like, really kind of getting involved in, like, what I, it's kind of steered me to what I really liked. I was like, oh, I like history. I like English. I like that stuff. I just like seeing kids learn actively, like, kind of getting it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, ding, the light bulb goes on. And so because of, of, of that, it kind of gave me, like, a sense of purpose, mm-hmm. right? It's like, oh, I should be doing this. This is what, right. I, this is what I'm really called to do, right? right? I, and it was my passion right. to be able to do that. Um, and as we're doing that and talking about, like, you know, these things that we're, we've been discussing, goal setting is a, a big thing, um, especially in my house. Um, we try to set goals and do certain things. And I'm sure your students uh, try to achieve those things in, in your class as well. Um, one thing I do like uh, about our, our community here at BHS is it's very close-knit. A lot of folks don't usually leave town, which we love. Um, um, and the community engagement is really something. They have something going on this evening. If you're not involved, you should go check it out. Uh, Dr. Morgan will elaborate more on that. But anyway, uh, the community engagement they have is very, very unbelievable. High schools engage with parents and local businesses and educational bodies, while corporations kind of engage in, like, with their customers and their partners and industry stakeholders and things like that. So, I mean, really, in essence, well, high school and business corporations are really one and the same. Fundamentally speaking, um, I know when I went to high school, it was, it was interesting. I'm sure you can relate to this one. As you get to high school and you're kind of new, you're finding your footing, you don't really know where you fit in. Mm-hmm. You get a group of friends, mm-hmm. and you finally find, like, some courses that you really like, and you start to get into a groove, right? And I'm sure some of your students have, have done that with you. What I want to know is as they're into that groove and they're actually finding that that space of really learning exactly what business law is or even what personal finance is, how is it that they're going to take that and actually make a living at it? At the beginning, uh, what I do is I ask all the students to write an essay, where would I like to be five years from now? Where would I like to be 10 years from now? Mm. So I look at each one of those and I read them. So we talk about how to get to those particular places. Mm -hmm. A lot of them would like to go into the legal field. A lot of them would like to go into the medical field. Mm -hmm. A lot of them would like to go into science. So we talk about how to get to some of those, some of those careers. Mm -hmm. So we spend a good portion of our curriculum on how to achieve to some of those uh, aspirations. And I even have a, a guest speaker come in, and I had a person from the armed services come in. I have someone from the guidance office come in and talk to our students, mm-hmm. and I always have someone from the business community come in. So with uh, with my information as well as theirs, we try to put as much information in front of the students as possible so they'll know when they leave my class, they'll have some sort of direction of what they like to achieve. So oh, that's I, I don't like them to leave my class and say, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I give as much information as possible on how to achieve their aspirations if they want to go in whatever direction they want to go into. And, I, and part of our curriculum, we talk about colleges and alternative to colleges. Mm-hmm. So we give loads of information. So this, they say this class isn't for everyone, but this cl- I try to make this class en- encompass enough information that it's for everyone. I love it. So with that being said, corporations are kind of like that as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just like high school, mm-hmm. right? 
they both involve management and administration and task and their planning and organizing stuff, staffing and directing and controlling resources. Um, they both require effective leadership and decision making, which I think is important to achieve your respective goal, right? Accountability, that's high, right? We got to make sure that as teachers, we're accountable, as, minutes, as administrators, standards. we're accountable, right? All those standards are great. Mm -hmm. We need to have those, right? And I think you need to have that in business as well. And so when they come to your class, they're going to learn those things as well. And that'll take them and serve them well as they go into the community right. and start to be able to, to really make a, earn a money and earn yeah. a career, make a career. Um, Adaptation and change is really important, especially in our society today. Mm -hmm. So much has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, social media has really hit us in the face. It's really given us, it's like a blessing and a curse, I say. Mm -hmm. It's given mm -hmm. us an outlet mm -hmm. to do some things. Um, and, and I notice as we adapt to this, high school and corporations kind of have to do the same thing. They got to adapt and they got to change in environments. And, and they also need like new educational type things, um, standards and technologies that kind of push forward. We talked a little bit about that. Um, both entities, by the way, high school as well as corporations, uh, undergo sort of periodic evaluations, which is really important, right? And those reforms kind of help improve all the standards that we have going forward and their effectiveness and their efficiency, all of that stuff is important for us, right? That, that's one of the biggest things I think uh, helps us. Now, uh, where do you see yourself in terms of your class uh, and the tools and resources that you have in, say, three to five years from now? Will you be teaching the same type of stuff or will it be a little bit different? What are you thinking? Well, it, I think just as you said, uh, things evolve, technology evolves. So wherever technology in the industry is, is pushing to it, that's where I have to change my curriculum to meet the demands. Mm -hmm. Whatever demands are out there right now, they're going to be different in about mm -hmm. two or three years. Mm -hmm. So I have to change my curriculum to meet the needs of employers and also uh, if you want to start your own business. Now we're in the gig economy. Everyone's starting their own little thing, either online. Mm -hmm. So we, t we talk a lot about starting a business is online. Who knows what that's going to be in, in two or three years from now. Mm -hmm. So whatever is out there two or three years, I have to stay on top of it. I always have to do um, up-to-date reading and, and check my sources, uh, check, see where the latest uh, employees are hiring, mm -hmm. where are they moving, even geographical, where right. are they moving to, where the jobs are going to be at. So I have to be on top of my game just so I can provide up-to-date information for the students. So I don't know where we're going to be about five years from now, but you can bet you can bet that I'm going to be on top of it. Oh, yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. I'm going to be working toward being oh, on top sure. of it. Working so hard because the, the, I actually work for the students. So I'm working hard enough just to provide good content so they'll be prepared in the future. Absolutely. So I'm constantly working, constantly working. I'm, I'm taking classes. Matter of fact, I have an, uh, a webinar tonight at 730 about, about finance. So I'm constantly on the phone. I'm constantly doing research. I'm constantly doing um, uh, seminars myself. Uh, we got the summer coming up. I got a few seminars personal finance seminars. So I'm, I'm constantly doing things just so I can help my students. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, right there, dedicated educator, <laughs> always doing the thing and, and making sure that he's on top of the, the latest resources and technology, yeah, which is I'm awesome. Trying, I'm that's, trying. That's, that's a good thing. Because things are going to change and you got to change with it. Well, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, communication is. and collaboration is a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like in a high school and also in a corporation, both require really effective communication and collaboration, right, among members, really kind of the function, right? I mean, we can't have, like, as they say, the inmates running the asylum, right? right. We got to make sure we, we, we have a hierarchy. We know who's, who, who's in charge, right? And I feel like in order for things to run smoothly, of course, teachers need to co uh, collaborate excuse me, on curriculum mm -hmm. with their fellow teachers mm -hmm. and also the, the administrators. Mm -hmm. And employees and corporations also need to work together on certain projects, mm -hmm. right? So they mm -hmm. ki it kind of goes hand in hand. I feel like uh, both institutions as well um, use meetings and reports to kind of figure out where we're headed and what we're doing, right? Maybe digital communication is another tool that sort of helps coordinate certain activities and things, which I really, 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 really like. Um, and so I'll say to you, Mr. Pittman, as we're talking about communication and collaboration, how is it 
that uh, your students communicate what they've learned from your classes to you directly? As far as communication? Yes. Well, I'm always communicating with my students as to what they need. Uh, as I mentioned before, at the beginning of class, we I have them fill out what would they like to do five and ten years from now. So they're communicating to me what direction they would like the class to go. Mm -hmm. So while I'm reading each letter, and that's the second or third day of class, I'm reading where would they like to be mm -hmm. five years from now. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly reading it. They're communicating to me as to what they would like to learn. Mm -hmm. So I do have a curriculum that I like to teach, but I always sidestep as to the information according to that, that those uh, my dear letters, mm -hmm. which I call mm -hmm. my dear letters, my dear, or where would I like to be five years from now? <laughs> where would I like to be 20 years from now? So right. I read those letters, and I'm constantly reading them every few weeks. I don't read them once at the beginning of the year and put them away. Mm -hmm. I'm reading them every few weeks to make sure that I'm communicating to the students that whatever we're, we're learning, it's applicable to their future. Mm. Yeah, so I'm constantly communicating with them as to where they like, what school they would like to, what what job they would like to to uh, uh, to uh, to be doing uh, so many years from now. So, but I'm a constantly communicating, and they're communicating to me whether verbal or in writing. Oh, I love it. So, yeah. being on top of that part, mm -hmm. right? Having them communicate back and forth, so now you can kind of see exactly where they're headed, yeah. right? And right. and what really applies to them, and where they're headed as far as career goes. Yeah. We love all of that stuff, Absolutely. and that's why you you're you're the man, Mr. <laughs> Pittman, doing all those resources. We love it. I'm trying. I'm all trying. right. That's right. Thinking about performance metrics, because that's a big thing, not only here at BHS, but also in corporations, right? So high school success is measured basically by what? Students' performances, their test scores, mm -hmm. you know, graduation rates, things like that. Mm -hmm. MCAS, they always do those type of things, right? Yeah, yeah, Try to yeah. gauge where a student is, right? right, right. And teacher effectiveness, like how, how, are, how are our teachers complying with educational resources and standards, right? Mm -hmm. Those performance metrics uh, are, are really big. But in corporations, think about this. Success is measured by what? Financial performance. Money. Right? Money. It's all about the money, right? Yeah, about the and, and the profits the, and the margin, yeah, right? The stock prices, yep. right? All of that. Staying that's in really, black. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. really kind of interesting to me that... High school is very similar to like a corporation or a business mm -hmm. because the standards have to be up to snuff, standards. right? That's number one. Right. Your success is measured by finance, your, your performance in, in, the, in the classroom. Data. Right? Mm -hmm. And you have the, the teachers and administrators, administrators excuse me, transferring this data to the students. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so hopefully they get it, mm -hmm. impact it, and able to translate that and carry that with them for the rest of their lives. And I think that's kind of one of the most important things we have here at BHS. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, Mr. Pittman, do you have any pets? I do not have any pets. Mm -hmm. um, I don't spend enough time at home, <laughs> so I, I don't want to abuse any pets. They'll be look, looking at me when I come through the door at 9, 10 o'clock at night. Hey, man, I'm kind of hungry. Where yeah. you been? So um, I, I don't have any pets because yeah, uh, you, know. you, you really got to be home. You got to put in the hours. And yeah, no doubt. I, I don't want to abuse any pets. <laughs> uh, no doubt about it. I do not. I personally don't have any pets either. Uh -huh. uh, my wife is a cat person. I'm more okay. of a dog guy. Okay. But, yeah, that's another story. Yeah. If I you was know, home you know. more often, and I, I would, uh, I probably would have a dog if I was home, but uh, I'm not at home enough. You know, <laughs> leaving early and coming home late, so I, yeah, I tell you, that dog oh, looking at me goodness. like, "Yo, man, where you been?" So. I hear you. I hear you. Listen, <laughs> speaking of not being home yeah. enough. That's me. Uh, so I don't know if some of you guys know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I coach basketball and I work for the Boston Celtics. Uh, shameless plug there. I've been doing that for 15 years. I work for their uh, their Celtics camps during the summertime, and it's coming up. And as we know now, the Boston Celtics, go Celtics, are in the uh, NBA Finals at this particular juncture. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to uh, to carry carry it through and, and, and win Banner 18. Um, as a basketball coach, though, I get such joy out of not just watching them professionally, but seeing my kids also achieve their goals. So uh, I coach for New England Playmakers, which is an a a a u organization based out of Hamilton, Wenham. And uh, those kids really work hard, and they, they're trying to achieve their goals. What I like about it is they have purpose. 
right? They're thinking to themselves, my primary purpose is to come here and get as good as I can at basketball. Well, guess what? When you come to high school, it's the same thing. Your primary purpose is when you come to high school is to get as good and well-versed as you can in all the subjects that, that are offered here, right? And when you're going to take those with you and carry those with you, hopefully, the, uh, the rest of your life, that torch, right? So uh, I just wanted to make that an analogy because I feel like basketball is a microcosm of, of life in general. It teaches you discipline, focus, working together, right? All the overcoming adversity, mm -hmm. all those things are going to happen in life, and right. So we want to make sure that we're prepared for it. So if you take Mr. Pittman's business law class or his personal finance class, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, you will be ready for it. One thing I also like about uh, the, the the actual fundamental differences and also the sameness of of high school and corporations is how they're kind of organizationally put together. Um, I did mention about um, administrators. I mentioned about teachers. I mentioned about all that. Without any of that, none of the structure happens. We don't have uh, any anything to really follow. We don't have a blueprint, really, right? Uh, it's that's laid out for us to follow. So I feel like this question to you, Mr. Pittman, as we get along in the journey of of high school. And we're figuring out where we want to go with our lives. And kids come to your class, and they're looking at things fundamentally speaking. How do you think that you can continue to help those students that 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 are in your class that kind of mm, kind of get it but don't get it? You know what I mean? Yeah, there's quite a few students who come in and they're not. I wouldn't say lost, but they have very little direction as to what they're going to do after BHS. So that goes back to me providing as much information as possible and exposing to them as many resources out there, as many career choices they have. Mm -hmm. So I'm just opening their eyes. They can do anything at all. It's like your, your players. If you put in the work, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. So that's the message that I want to get across my students. If you put in the work, you can be anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing's out of reach. Right. Being a doctor or a pilot or a physician or a, a scientist, none of that is out of reach if right. you put in the work. Absolutely. So that's what I'm encouraging students. Put in the work. No doubt. All work works. <laughs> so you must put in the work. Right. It, it doesn't have to be in a particular place. Say if you, you don't think you're going to make the uh, being a doctor or and just put in the work. You'll get there in the medical field somewhere, somewhere that's going to attract your interest. But just put in the work. Well, that's it. And I think if you invest in yourself doing that, mm -hmm. putting in the work, you're going to see the fruits of your labor come to, to fruition. Absolutely. Uh, and a lot of kids don't see that right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Right. They feel like ah, I'm in school. I got plenty of time. And sometimes mm -hmm. they goof off, you know, freshman year, yeah. sophomore year. And then all of a sudden now they're up against it. In, right. in, as a <laughs> it's junior, almost too late. And a senior, it's almost right. too late. Right. So, I yeah. mean, so what I always say yeah. to my students in my leadership class is, mm -hmm. You can't expect to see change if you never do anything differently. Right, right. And that's the whole point of it. Right. It's like you got to invest in yourself. Absolutely. And be able to be like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to set aside an hour to do my homework mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I'm going to set aside an hour to do this particular project right. or I'm going to listen to in class and apply what Mr. Pittman is saying or or any other of our educators here mm -hmm. at BHS. Because I think that's the most important aspect of of anything in life is being able to invest in yourself. Absolutely. And then right taking that investment and moving that forward right. right if you want to see a different output you got to change the input so input comes from you right. you got to put in the time you got to listen in class you got to do a bunch of things you always got to look at the person in the mirror that's the person that you're in a race with oh. so never mind about any other students who have their their grades or whatever look at the person whose name is on your report card that's the person that you're in the race with so Work hard and just put just put in the work. No question. Put in no the work. question. All work works. I guarantee you. <laughs> Without a doubt. I guarantee you. Well, it's interesting that we're talking about this because I mean, as we go through our journey as educators, we're leaving footprints on our students. And hopefully we'll leave in good footprints, footprints that they'll remember, mm -hmm. right? I remember my high school fondly, and I enjoyed it, and then the journey was tremendous. But then you move on, and you take those stories, and you take those experiences with you, and as you do that, you become the person that you are right today. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're out of time right now. I'd like to thank my guests, 
Mr. Pittman, the personal finance teacher and also a business law teacher here at, uh, at BHS, Beverly High School. Uh, my name is Mr. Davis. I'm a, I'm a leadership teacher here as well at BHS. And um, I'll tell you, I enjoy having these conversations because I feel like if we're leaving a footprint on you, we've done our job. And that's really where it's at right there. So I hope to see you next time. Uh, Channel 22, make sure you tune in. And also on uh, SoundCloud, that's where we're going to be. And uh, tune in next time for our next episode of Footprints. Thanks. See you. Bye.